Hi guys, Wandersun here. Welcome to the second part of the tutorial. In this tutorial we will create a modern splash screen using the circular progress bar that we made in the previous video. If you have not seen the first part of this tutorial I recommend that you watch the first video before continuing this tutorial. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and leave your like, it helps a lot to bring new videos here on the channel. Let's start by creating a new window in Qt Designer PySide 6 version. Start by renaming the QMain window to Splash Screen and change the window dimensions to 300 by 300 pixels, as well as height and width, maximum and minimum. Setting these values will lock the window size, avoiding being resized by mistake. Once this is done, remove the menu bar and also the status bar, because we will not need them. Add a frame to the window, and then in central widget add a layout. Set all margins to 10, and in layout spacing set to 0. Whenever you add a new frame, go to frame shape and choose as no frame. This will avoid border errors when used on operating systems like macOS or Linux. Create one more frame, set frame shape as no frame, and then add a layout to the parent frame. Set all margins to 20 and layout space to 0. This frame will be the background of our splash screen. Always try to rename widgets for easy localization and also for organizational reasons. Once this is done, we will add a stylo to our frame. If you want to follow the same color scheme as Pi Dracula, I will be leaving below the official link of the theme Dracula created by Zeno Rocha where you can copy the same color scheme. The next step is to add the style as shown in the video, defining the background color, text color and border radius. In border radius set the value of 120 pixels, this will make the rectangle a circle, and if you want to also change the font of the project. Add one more frame. In layout, set all values to zero. Set the maximum height to 120 and rename the frame. Change the height to 160 and in stylesheet put the background as none. After that, create a new label, add a new text for it, center the text horizontally, and then create a copy of that label. Add a frame to the center, select all the widgets we just created and add a grid layout for them. In the texts frame, add a layout to expand the information within your area. I will add a new frame, and I will create and a new label that we will format your style. Change the label texts as shown in the video and don't forget to change the frame shape. In the label version, set the maximum and minimum height as well as the width. Once this is done, go to layout alignment and center horizontally.
The next step is to add a background and rounded edges to the label. To do this change the style as shown in the video. Change the maximum and minimum height to 24 so that it accepts the border radius of 12 pixel that we created in the style. In the central frame, we will set a minimum height to make space for the percentage text of the circular progress bar. In frame texts, change the maximum height to 180, the central frame with minimum height to 80, and set the minimum height to 30 for the title label. Finally, let's just change the title of our window. Once this is done, create a new folder and name the file splash underscore screen. The next step is to create a blank window. That window will only contain text and will be displayed as soon as the splash screen reaches 100%. At the end of this video, I will show you how to integrate this splash screen with PyDracula or any other project you want. Save this file with the name main.ui in the same folder as the splash screen. The next step is to export this interface with the Python format in view Python code. This is only a function of PyTide's Qt designer. If an error is encountered in this project, watch the video above on the card where I explain how to solve this problem. Export the splash screen and also the main window in the same folder as the projects. Go to the folder we just created and open the VS code inside it. Create a new file called main.py and past all PySide 6 modules as show in the video. Enter the codes as shown in the video, this will give us a run window for the interface we choose. And create a class called main window, that class will receive the main window that we just created in Qt Designer. The next step is to import the two windows we just created. See that the main window class is receiving the UI main window class from the UI main file. This will give us access to it and all its widgets. See that when running our script the window is imported and displayed correctly. If we change the class to splash screen see that it is also displayed correctly. However, to display the splash screen we will create a specific class for that. Just copy and paste the class we just created and change its name and the class that will be imported. In the main window class, delete the self show line, because we will display this class directly from our splash screen. At the end of the code, change the initial class that will rotate our window to that of the splash screen. The next step is to copy and paste our circular progress bar into our new project. You saw that it is possible to reuse this project wherever we want. See that this project is a little different from what we created in the previous video. I added new colors based on the theme Dracula and also a circle as a background. When you open the code you can see the circle that has just been created. Make this change to your project as a homework assignment. See the new parameters that have been added and the ones that have been modified and do the same in your project. Let's copy the widgets folder which is a library which contains our circular progress bar and any others you wish to create. Paste into the splash screen project folder and then immediately import the splash screen class. Add the widget to the splash screen class and also set its width and height to 270. Once this is done we will use the setParent function, 
With this function we can say where our custom widget will be displayed, it will be added within the widget we choose and having its position as absolute. In this project we will add the progress bar inside the central widget. To display the widget we use the show function. See that the widget is displayed, but its edges are cut off. To fix this I will add a start value for easy viewing and use the set fixed size function to define its size. When we run the application we see the widget being displayed correctly, but we need to adjust its position, for that we will use the move function. This function will define the distance of the widget in relation to its parent. Set the margins as 15 pixels, left and top. We will also enable drop shadow. I will change the font to 40 and run the application again. The font size was good, but we need to better align the widgets within the splash screen window. Inside QT Designer, I will download the title position more, do this and export again in Python, overwriting the previous project. I still think it needs a few more adjustments. Make adjustments as shown in the video to improve alignment or adjust as you wish or find better. Now let's change the color of the background bar, for that I will open the select color of QT Designer to generate an RGBA color for it. with opacity at 140. Copy the generated values and cancel the style editing without saving. Once this is done, apply these values as shown in the video, using the QColor class for this. See that the transparency has been applied correctly in the background bar. To add a drop shadow to the splash screen window, we can open the progress bar project, copy the shadow we created and paste it into the splash screen window. When we rotate the window we see the background is completely black, because we need to remove the standard title bar and also make the window background transparent. Use set window flags and set attribute as show in the video. See that we now have all the shadows correctly applied to our window. To finish this project, it's time to create a timer. This timer will update the progress bar from 0 to 100%, right after opening the new window and closing itself. Let's define the execution time as 25 milliseconds and create a function called update which will increment the counter from 0 to the value 100. Let's first create a global variable called counter, so we can update these values. What are we going to do now, and every 25 milliseconds we apply the value of our counter to the progress bar, and after that increase its value. See that an error is generated when trying to run the code, because a parameter called timeout was missing before the connect signal. See that it's working, but we need to set a limit for this number, which in this case will go up to 100%. After that it will pause the counter and open the main window that we created using QT Designer. See that our window is opening correctly when the value reaches 
But now we need to close the splash screen when it reaches this value. In this case I used a timer as an example, in real life you can use functions that make real checks in your application and update these values. See that now everything is working properly and being closed when it reaches the value of 100%. And to finish this project, I will teach you how to integrate this splash screen into your existing projects, in which case, I will implement it in the PyDracula user interface. Open the VS Code in your project folder and your startup class, which in my case is in the main file. Copy all the code responsible for the splash screen that we just created, except the main window, and paste it into the main file of the PyDracula project as shown in the video. I'm just going to reorder the modules to organize the project. After that, copy the file UI splash screen and the folder widgets into the root folder of the PyDracula project. When executing we see that the main window that is being started, this is because we need to change the main window class for the splash screen in the footer of our code. See that when running our project everything is working correctly. After that you can test new values, customize the progress width, change the color or make any other adjustments you want. And we end here another tutorial. Remembering that this interface will be released free of charge to everyone on GitHub on May 1st. If you want to have early access to the codes, consider being a Patreon supporter. The source code for the Circular Progress Bar project at the moment will be exclusively available only to Patreon supporters. Soon I have great news to tell you here on the channel and new tutorials. So subscribe and leave your like to not miss any videos. Thanks to all Patreon supporters. See you in the next video.